you. Thank you for the opportunity. And I hope my audio is visible, is uh, loud enough for everybody. I'd like to welcome every each and every person, whoever is joining us from different platforms. I'd like to thank you and welcome you as we uh, break the bread together and share. Uh, before I go further, uh, there's a special person that I like to uh, mention, and that's none other than my daughter. Today being a birthday, uh, I like to say happy birthday, my baby, and may you continue to, you know, be the light in the world. And thank you very much for being introduced in my life and being a shine in my life. So while that is out, so I hope now we're okay, my baby. Now let's go back to the word. Uh, a story is told of a young lady, a young lady who used to work in a factory. Uh, and as you all told, like we need to respect each and every person whoever comes in and out, regardless of uh, uh, the position. And this young lady, each and every day, she used to greet the gate man, or you can say the watchman of security, as we normally refer to them in this area. So as they, she used to do that in the morning, early in the morning, she stays high, sometimes carries some hot soup, sometimes water. But that communication and relationship grew as they go in and out. And each and every day when she comes in, she says hello respectfully with a smile. In the evening as she went out, she does the same. And that thing continued and continued as people used to live at the same time in the factory. Now it happened one evening that the security noticed that everybody else has left. And this lady who's kind, very generous, all of a sudden, the lady is not coming out as everybody else in the section or in the department that she worked for had left. And that intrigued the security. And she was, it was a bit concerned because this is a person that each and every day used to have that heart used to you know, go above and beyond, even though she was in a higher position, but she never used to despise this person in the lower position, as you might think he was. So this security got intrigued. And what happened to the other side? The lady was actually in a distressed position because apparently there is a, there is a, 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 a freezer area that she went to before she, she, she went to do an inventory just a few minutes before she checked out or clicked out going out. And that the problem is that the area only opens or closed from outside. We can say from open from outside. So apparently every time you go in, you put a stopper and the door automatically uh, put in a small gap that you can open later. But there was a problem that day and the click was never there. So the security went on his round looking for this lady because she was so generous enough that she had to make sure that this lady was good. And as if, you, if you're in the medical field, you realize that you're in a, if you're in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a freezer point, there's a particular minute or time that you're in before your body uh, goes to uh, uh, distress. And it was only a few minutes, a few minutes, that security opened the door and realized the lady was in distress, covered up, called the ambulance, and the lady was saved just because of her generosity. So next time, just say hi to those, anybody else that you feel, because you never know who will be the right person to help you out. Let's pray as you open the word. Our Father, we are going to open our word. I ask you for your blessings, because the words that is going to come out, Father, may your words come directly from your Father. Any distraction that it may be your Father, be the distraction of the uh, social medias or the distraction of maybe somebody around us, maybe blocked all the distraction. And let's concentrate fully on your word, oh Father, because your word can transform and will transform and has the power to transform. Be with us in this particular minutes, hours as you're going to break your bed. And let the message touch somebody somewhere because this is your um, this is my humble request in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we are going to speak particularly about a young man that I feel was in a situation, a very compromising situation that later came out to be a very impressing or a very, uh, uh, situ a very interesting story that all of us, one way or the other, has been in that situation that this young man I'm going to share with. 
I'm requesting all of us, if you have our Bible or gadgets, whatever we have next to us, preferably the Bible, to open uh, Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter number 37. And let's tackle from, we'll, we'll go to tackle from the entire uh, Genesis from 37 onwards. I'll direct you and I'm sure we'll be blessed together. So I'm starting in from Genesis 37. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is his story of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old. That's the person that we want us to speak about today. A young man called Joseph. Now, if you go back to skip to verse, verse 3, where he says, still on verse 37. Now, Israel loved Joseph, Israel being Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was son of the old age. Now, for us to understand, why, why, why did Jacob having almost 11 kids or 11 sons, why does he particularly love one than the other? For us to understand this story, we need to go back a bit. Let's move a bit back to understand why this comparison, why this favoritism, if you may call it, that Jacob having a lot of kids, and, and I'm sure you being in a position where you have your brothers, your sisters, your, 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 your nephews, your nieces, or even a community, even at work, that there is one particular person that is being favored by the rest. I'm sure that creates hatred. And let's try to understand why Jacob particularly favored Joseph. Now, if you go back a little bit in the story, and I'm giving you a nutshell of the story, was that there were two bride or there were two wives that Joseph came to later marry. But there was one particular one called Rachel. That this lady was the catch or the apple of the eye, if you may call it, for Jacob. And if you understand the story, he came and worked more and more years, but in seven years, but instead he was given Leah, who was the oldest uh, of, 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 of the siblings. And for that particular reason, it created a bit of tension between Leah and Rachel being the sister. And I'm sure in our communities as well, it's very hard for the younger one to get married before the older one. And I think dad was trying to protect uh, the older one and he gave Jacob the older sister instead of the younger sister. Of course, we know that Jacob worked more years to be given later or to marry later Rachel. But these particular things created hatred. And I'm sure in the beginning of the story, if you go through, you understand that because of that hatred or something, God blocked or stopped the womb of Rachel. And later we find out that Leah gave birth to more and more sons. But at a later age, the womb was open and Joseph being the firstborn of Rachel. So let's back to, get back to understand the story now. Let's back to uh, chapter, uh, uh, verse 37, uh, chapter 37, verse number three. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all children. Now we understand why the love was there before, because this one was the first son of the lady that he loved. Of course, he had another wife called Leah, but the apple or his love was Rachel. And because for many, many years he didn't bore children, Joseph being the first son, he was the person that Jacob loved most. Let's now pick up the story from where it went to. Let's go to verse five. Now, Joseph, Joseph had a dream and he told his brothers, of course, he had brothers with, uh, 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 Leah, and he had also brothers with, if you, if you understand the story, with Zilpam and uh, 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 Bilham, which both of them were maids of the two uh, wives, but later also bore children, Judas and the rest. But you'll find out that now in particular that Joseph is hatred. And let me, let me let, let's understand something. The hatred is the hatred where one particular person is favored more than the rest. What does that create? Of course, in at workplace, if this a particular person that is most favored. Let's, let's understand what is his favoritism. If, if, I, if I picture in Joseph's house, not mentioned in the Bible, if I picture what was happening in Joseph and Jacob's house, being favored, it means there was a priority. Or being favored, it means there was a special uh, meal, most probably. He used to sit next to the dad for sure. Most probably where he used to sleep was somewhere different. He used to be have special beddings. Of course, the clothes already been mentioned that he was having a special kind of robe. So there was that particular favoritism on he was a bit different from the rest. Being that, of course, the, the story itself, but at home, if you realize, 
those small, small things that dad keeps next to you. There was, there was those top layers. I'm sure those people have studied during in the boarding school as I was. They, in the food as is served in the kitchen, there's a top layer. The top layer is that, that they just cook the soup on top. And that top layer is always, people call it the special one or the special meal. So I'm sure Joseph underwent those special, special occasions. Now, let's pick up the story from verse five. Now, Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brother and hated him even more. Of course. Let's understand what the story was. Let's go to verse six. And he said to them, please hear this dream, which I've dreamed. There we were blinding sheaves in the field. Behold, the sheaf arose and all, and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down my sheaf. So this is a person that is already hated. His story is that people will bow down before him. Come on, Joseph, we already hate you. Now you want to add salt in the injury? You want to add more salt in the injury? Let's pick it up on verse 9. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and the 11 stars bow to me. Wow. So on top of being hated, now you want us to bow before you. This, mind you, is younger than the older brothers. Mind you, this is a person that is being favored by you. By, by the father. Mind you, there's a person that has special, uh, 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 let's say facilities, special everything in the house. And now again, you want us to bow down before you? Of course, he was a threat. And of course, people don't like threat. He was a threat because this brother don't like him. Let's pick up the story again. Let's, let's continue swiftly in verse number 19. Skill in chapter 37, verse number 19. And then they say to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. Because now they went at a far distance. If you read from verse 12, let's still on verse 19. A dreamer is coming. Come, therefore, let us kill him. They conspired to kill him because now he was a threat. Now this is a person that has to go for sure because this is a person. Now, let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let me try to understand what is happening here. Now, Joseph is a person that is not only favored by, by the father, but he's favored by God. The favoritism of God, people will not understand it. And that comes the fear of other mankind. Because the fear of other mankind is this is a threat and he has to be eliminated. But in the eyes of God, he was being favored because there was something that Joseph was. Joseph was a special person in God's eye. And he was carrying a big law because he was going to have fulfillment as we speak in the later, in the reading later. And understand that sometimes you being the special and favored by God, man will not understand it. And sometimes even in your business that is being flourished now, the business is picking up now during pandemic and others businesses are failing down. Other people will not like it because how come that only is business is picking up. You might even not have a job. Everybody is losing job, but only you, your job is being kept because God has a special purpose for you where you are. And other people might not understand that. Being the favored, and this is what was happening to Joseph because of the favor, for, because of the shield that God has shielded him, the man and his brother, they don't like it. And sometimes even as the story was told in some other places where the favor of God was on a lady that was selling tomato across the road, but the other people didn't like it and they don't understand how come this lady only tomatoes used to sell. And even the two of them went to the same vendor that the lady used to go to. And they bought the same quantity of tomatoes and they went to the same location that the lady was selling. And they even have a special stand for, for, for their product, but only the product of the lady was being sold. And they used to wonder why only your product is being sold. Whereas we went to the same vendor, I even bought more quantity than you. My stand is more attractive than yours. How come only your product is being sold? My brother and sister, this is a favor that God has shielded. And there's a light that shines upon you that when you're walking, everybody has to speak to you. There's something about you that everybody wants to be connected to. And that is a favor of God. That is the same light that Job had, that everybody has to speak with him. And the lady used to sell all the tomatoes. And people always wonder, how come 
We have the same product, but only this lady, his product is being sold. That is a favor of God. And that is a favor of God that even during the pandemic, as we are now, things are going astray. But there's sometimes God has just shielded you because of his divine purpose. Where you are, people are wondering, how come everybody else lost the job? But how come you're still there? How come in the crisis and, and even now people don't get job? How come you still get job? Because God had a divine and he still has a divine purpose for you. And he has step by step purpose that he has. And everybody doesn't understand that. And that is what they conspired in verse 21, chapter 37. But Reuben had it and delivered him out. And they hear, this is now the conspiration to kill him. Let's jump over to verse 20, 20, 26 on the same chapter 37. So Judah said to his brothers, what profit is there if we kill our brothers? What do they want to do? He said, let's jump to the num verse number 28. Then the Midians, traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmael for the 20 shakes of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Now, mind you, if you go back to chapter 37, Joseph is just 27 years old, maybe a few years older. He will be in his early 18, early 20s. And this is a person that is sold to a far distance. The title is mentioned is not over. And to me, Joseph, at that particular point, a 20 year old, being sold as a slave, leaving his parents, leaving his mom, leaving his father, his brothers, leaving his comfort of his home, going as a slave. And I'm sure he knew right was happening. His father was never, never knew uh, uh, the situation that was happening. I'm sure what was going through Joseph's mind was this is done. This is the end of me. Because Joseph was a slave. I don't know how they used to transport slave. And I believe it was not a luxurious way of transportation. I'm sure the slave probably was thrown on the back of, of, of the donkey. Or maybe even they were walking chained. I'm not sure how they were being transported at that time. But Picture a 20 year old, how was it to him? And you might not be a 20 year old. You might not, you might just be a Joseph of now. You might have lost everything. Your house is going to be closed. The darkness that Joseph saw or was with him, that moment that is being chained or being locked or being pulled to slave, you might be having that one now. But I'm going to tell you it's not yet over. Hang on, hang on, because the story is going to get interesting, because the revelation is going to get interesting. Don't give up. Just hold on, because even the darkness that exists now, even the darkness you're going through now, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Because Joseph, when he was that locked up, he was in pain. And I'm sure for him, he knew that it's over, that there is nothing good that is going to come out of his life. At that moment, at a 20-year-old, I wasn't ready to share this, but the conviction of the Lord gives me and I want to share with you. In my early 20s, I made up some bad decisions. And some of the decisions that I made ended up me being in a remand prison, in the maximum prison back home in Kenya. And it was through those bad experiences or bad uh, 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 decisions that I made and I remembered when I was reading this and I saw myself being Joseph. Because at 20 years old, Joseph was being carried, blinded, not knowing the future. And there was me also at 20 years old. When the prison gate were open, if you've been in any even a prison, it's a huge gate, very huge. And I think that is standard in all of them. When they open the gates, you don't know what is behind the gate. I was went, I went in very late at night. The worry, the anxiety of what is happening behind is what Joseph was having. Joseph knew it was over. I myself at that age at 20 years old, I knew it was over. It was the toughest experience that somebody can go to, but Joseph, at that age, at that time, knew there's something that was going to happen. And Joseph had a special purpose that God had with him. Let's continue swiftly. Let's move to verse number 36. We're still in verse 37. Now, the Medites had sold him in Egypt 
to Potiphar, an officer of Rao and captain of the guard. So now Joseph is going to an Egyptian home, being starting a new journey. How was this journey? I'm sure in his mind was this is now maybe where I need to start my life. So I'm sure there was moment of you know reality check where is this where I'm going to spend the rest of my life? Is this the place that is going to groom me? I'm sure there was those uh, 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 checks that he had ticked all of them because you understand he's still a slave and being a slave, we know how the master can do whatever he want to you are just a slave. And this is a journey that he's starting now. And the same journey that you yourself, the listener or the person who is there is undergoing a journey now. We don't know which journey. You might be going the toughest journey there is. And the reality is you just tick those boxes because Joseph had to continue this life for the purpose and revelation of the word. Now, you might be losing your job or you've lost your job and you're just starting a new journey. And the new journey could be that you're going to be jobless or could be you're going to downsize to a different apartment or could be that you have to go back home or could be your job or your, your businesses or, or something is just not in the right place and you're starting a new journey. Now, this is Joseph starting a new journey with you. Don't give up. It's not yet over. Let's jump to verse number 39. Joseph is now is a slave in Egypt. Now, Joseph had taken down Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian brought, brought him from the Ishmael, who had taken him down there. So now, of course, he, he went to a higher hierarchy with Potiphar. As we understand from the word, is 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 of a higher hierarchy in terms of the pharaoh. Pharaoh being the the king of the land. So let's jump over to verse number four, which is still in chapter number thirty nine. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him over sea of his house. So there's just something about Joseph that Potiphar cannot pinpoint exactly what it is. But this person is of special. There's something about him that he had to be pulled aside and told him, I don't know about what it is being of your young age. We, we might understand that he's still on his early 20s. But there's something about you that I'm going to put you in charge of this household. Now, everybody has to report to you being of a household. So he was already a leader at a very early age. Let's understand what happened in verse number seven. Let's skip to verse number seven, still on chapter 39. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast long, longing eyes on Joseph and she said, lie with him. Of course, you being a man of God, they'll be always spear. People will be spearing you because there's that special thing, that special light that is in you, man will not understand and that is a point where people will always try their best to bring you down because they cannot understand that favor that is in the Lord. Which favor is this? How come this person always prosper wherever he goes? And that is a particular reason where there has to be somebody that is always bringing you down because they cannot understand how is this light that is shining with this person that every time we go with him, we always get the same favor. We always get the same blessing. We understand from the word in chapter number 39 that Potiphar home or house was blessed because of Joseph. Come his wife now in verse number uh, uh, eight in ch chapter number 39. They don't understand how you get this favor, this light that is in you, how come? And that particular reason that everybody else will try to spear to, 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 to speak behind your back because they don't understand this light that you have. Oh, my brother and sister, once you decide to follow Christ, the light shines that is so bright that the person doesn't know you, but just asks us to approach you and ask you, how are you? Because they cannot understand this light that is in you. It's so bright that everybody wants to be associated with. And for those who don't understand, will try their best to bring you down because they could not understand how you get this favor from this God. You, they don't understand. And this lady could not understand how come Joseph gets the light. And we understand from the word that we, don't, we are not told how long this particular uh, 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 approach lasted. But we understand it was a long approach because 
the lady kept on pursuing Joseph and while he's saying no and no and no. We are not sure how long it took, but I'm, 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 I feel to, 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 to check it wasn't once, it wasn't twice, and Joseph kept on telling her no until one day, until one day in verse number 10. So it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her, that is verse number 10, to live with her or to be with her. But it happened about this time when, when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was inside. Verse number 12. Then she caught him by his garment. Remember the same garment that the brothers threw or put smeared blood and went to give it to their dad. That is the same garment. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a similarity with the garments and there's a reflection and there is a purpose where the garments are being mentioned in both uh, scenarios. So the lady grabbed the garment and of course, makes a false accusation against Joseph. And I'm sure when Potiphar came, which is in verse number 16, if you follow with me, so she kept his garment with her until the master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like this saying, the Hebrew servant, who you brought to us came into me, came to me to mock me. Of course, Potiphar being the master, and she just came from home, and the Hebrew and the wife says an accusation that this particular Hebrew that you left in my home came and uh, mock me. There is something about your light that people will never understand. There's something about your light and the more people speak about you, you need to understand that the more people speak bad about you is the more light keeps on shining because God has a big purpose for you. The more the brothers used to keep uh, speak bad about him, the more the lady keeps on speaking bad about her is the more the light keeps on shining in Joseph. My brothers and sisters, the light that you're in, people don't understand. Not everybody will understand the light and there are people who will fight this so hard to bring you down. Let's move into verse number, let's move into verse number 20. Still in chapter 9, verse number 20. Then Joseph master took him and put him into prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined and he was there in prison. Let's picture Joseph now towards his almost mid-twenties, as you understand from his uh, age. He just came in from a comfortable home where he was a master, he was in charge of the household, and now he's thrown to prison. What was going through his mind? I'm sure at one point Joseph said it's over. At one point he understood in his mind that this is over because I just came in and this is the second time I'm being put into shame. The first time I'm thrown out with my brothers. Now this is the second time I'm thrown out by the lady or of the master. And now I'm in prison and I'm wrongly convicted and I'm innocent. What was going through Joseph's mind at that time? Did he understand that this is over? At one point, was he distressed? At one point, did he feel like this is the end? What you're going through my brother and sister, at one point, you always feel it's over. If I was to speak to my 20-year-old self, and I bring my 20-year-old self and speak, and I'll tell him it will be okay, and he's going to be okay. And sometimes in life, you just need to bring your younger self. You need to bring your yesterday self and speak to your, your today self and tell yourself, my yesterday self, I told you today was going to get better. My yesterday self, my last month self, my last year self, you bring him today or bring her today, speak in front of a mirror if given an opportunity. You will tell yourself it's going to be okay. Those who've been defiled at young age, maybe there's somebody listening now. At that time, things look so dark that it looked in Joseph's eyes. But I'm telling you, speak to yourself 10 years ago and you say it's going to be okay. Those who are dragged or dragged down because of alcoholism or they're in a different, uh, 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 engaged in a different, uh, 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 whatever it is that you feel is bringing you down in your heart. Maybe an addiction that is bringing you down. 
Speak to your two years self, like two years later. Bring yourself together and you understand that it's going to be okay. Don't give up. It's not yet over. There's more, there's more revelation coming in. Let's, let's, let's pick it up now. Let's pick it up. Joseph is in prison, as we understand now. Let's read up in verse number 21, still in chapter 39. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Now, Joseph is in prison. Until how long, I'm not sure how, as soon as he came in, he was given the authority. It seems to be so fast because we are told the keeper, as soon as he saw him, knew there was something special about him. It could be instant. It could have taken some couple of days. But there is somebody God always sends to you. God always channels everything in the right direction. God is a driver. He's on the driver's seat. He knows the direction of which you're going to. However dark sometimes it looks, there's floodlights that he puts on and he carves his way around until the destination. He always put people along your way. Joseph was put along with Potiphar. He came to be where he was. Now, Joseph, again, is put in line with the keeper. And he became that man, that man that everybody else looked upon in the prison. That there was no decision that was made without the consent of Joseph in prison as the rest of the prisoners. Let's pick it up in verse number 14. It came to pass about this thing that the butler and the baker of the Egypt offended their lord. And the king of Egypt, the pharaoh, was angry with the two officers. Now, God again sends two other uh, gentlemen that are going to be a revelation in the coming, uh, uh, the coming, the coming days or the coming, the coming of the story. Now, if you understand as you pick it up, you understand that in verse number nine, in verse forty, then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph. So the, the two of them being the chief butler and the, and, the, and the bakery, they were both put in prison because one reason or the other. Now, at verse number nine, it says, and it speaks of the story where there was the dream that was uh, uh, shared to by Joseph where they could not understand a particular dream. Now, Joseph understood and gave them the interpretation of the dream, one being that the chief butler was going to go back to his work, but the bakery was going to be hung. And that came to pass, and Joseph told the chief butler, do not forget me. Let's go pick it up from verse number 23 in verse chapter 40, verse number 23. Yet the child butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. So of course, after he was released, he went on his ways. Joseph went back to being the leader of, 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 of the prison and months went by. Now the story getting interesting in verse number 41, where we suddenly understand the Pharaoh has a dream. Pharaoh has a dream and he doesn't understand where the dream comes from. And Pharaoh calls all his people that he knew. He called all the advisories. He called everybody else that could try to interpret this particular dream. And none of them could do it until verse number nine, chapter number 41. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh saying, I remember my faults these days. My pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in the course of the house and the captain guard, but both chief and butler. Now he's trying to remember there was somebody that can interpret your, your dream, pharaoh. Pick it up in verse number 14, chapter 41. Then pharaoh send, sent and called for Joseph and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon and shaved him, changed his clothes and came to pharaoh. Verse number 15, and Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have a dream and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard it was you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So the young man, an Hebrew, brought in in front of a king, well-dressed, shaved. His case was automatically thrown away if, he's, if he can interpret this dream. A dream speaking in front of a king you're brought in the front of a king. Listen to what Joseph replied. Let's pick it up in verse number 14, chapter 41, chapter, uh, chapter uh, verse number 41, chapter 16. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me, but God give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He said it so calmly as at a young age, being in front of a, a, a king, I'm sure 
being in front of a king, everybody else will be bound down and be anxious in his, in his speech. But look, or just listen to Joseph's speech, the confidence that he had. Verse number 16 again. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He answered that to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was marveled because everybody else was shaking in front of him. Let's pick it up in verse number 38 and verse number 28. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. So now God has spoke to Joseph through, God, God spoke to Pharaoh through Joseph. And now if you understand the story, and, 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 and I'll encourage you to please go through, because you might not be able to go through the entire verse, but I'll encourage you to go through the verse. It's a very interesting one. Pick it up from verse number uh, 30. After, af but after them, seven years of famine will arise and all the plenty will be forgotten. So there'll be a famine, seven years of, 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 of plentiful and seven years of drought where the land will be completely dry. And what Joseph tried to explain to Pharaoh, gave him the advice was the interpretation of it. And he told him how to store his uh, grains and bread and everything else that will be later used when the famine is so strong. Let's pick it up from verse number 33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. And that is the advice that he was given by God. And he didn't want to say, I am the person. He left it to to Pharaoh and told him, let you decide a descending wise man. Very wise from Joseph. Let's pick it up from verse number, uh, chapter number 37, still on verse uh, 41. So the advice was given in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all servant. And Pharaoh said to his servant, can we find such a one as this man in whom is the spirit of God? So of course, Pharaoh understood that this wisdom can only come from God. How does a 20 year old, or maybe at his age now, a 25, a 26, could have such authority, could have such the authority on his voice that he gave a very clear interpretation and he gave a solution on the interpretation on what Pharaoh should do in order for this uh, interpretation dream interpretation to come to reality or to be to come to revelation and through that speaking pharaoh was marveled and say this light that potiphar saw the same light that the keeper in the prison saw is the same light that pharaoh saw pharaoh saw the light and immediately even before joseph finished his word pharaoh had already made a decision that this is the person that I want him to be. Even before Joseph finished the conversation, he only immediately saw his structure. The way he came in after his shame, the light was so shining in Pharaoh's face that he made the decision instantly, even before Joseph went through the interpretation phase. Because we, we, we go through the story that Pharaoh never, inter never stopped Joseph even for one minute. When he was going through his, through his interpretation, Joseph, uh, Pharaoh actually add word by word. As a king, there's always that particular point where you, you stamp your authority and ask him, why is it so? Why do we need to do this? But if you understand from the story, it was flowing. So Joseph light that Potiphar saw, that the keeper saw, that was in Joseph when he left his Canaanite, is the same light that, Joseph, that Pharaoh saw. You cannot hide from that light. That light is so shiny that when you walk in a metro station, people are moving way out of your way. People want to be associated with you because they cannot understand what type of light do you have. That everybody is worried about what's happening tomorrow. Everybody is worried about the pandemic. But for some reason, you are calm and you're smiling. Everybody has lost job, including you. But why all of a sudden, why only you are smiling? What is this light that you're having? My brother and sister, that light that you have, people have noticed it. And the reason why sometimes people spear you and throw those, those spear at you is because they cannot understand how this light is so bright that we cannot have. 
And there's only a very clear reason. He said, come unto me, hold your everlasting, and I will give you rest. Seek ye kingdom first, and the rest shall be added to you. And that very simple interpretation landed Joseph in a role that this is a time, his vision is coming to fulfillment. Move with me to verse number 37. We're still in chapter number 41. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, we are repeating, can we find such one as this man, whom the spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, in as much as God has shown you all this, there's one, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. How long did it take for this interpretation? I believe it was less than 10 minutes. So for 10 minutes, you want to tell me that Joseph, that Pharaoh, for 10 minutes, Pharaoh had already made a decision that this young man who is below 30 years should be in charge of the entire kingdom. A 30 year old, less than, in 10 minutes, how did Pharaoh make come up to that conclusion? Joseph did not say anything new, but Pharaoh had a reason because Pharaoh could have, if he wanted to, and told him, we don't want such interpretation. For 10 minutes, a 25 year old or less, Joseph or Pharaoh had already made a decision that this man is white, is wise. That particular point intrigued me. And I understood it was a light that as soon as he walked in, as soon as he walked in, the kingdom, Pharaoh had already made a decision that this is the person that he wanted to. How did he make the decision? The light was so bright that Pharaoh could not resist. The light is so bright that you walk into an interview, the interviewer cannot understand how come this person, where have you been? Where have you been? Because this light is so bright my brothers and sisters, we need that light to be spread across and we need to walk with that light because there are very many people are suffering right now. They need to see that light. They need hope. The hope that has been lost, we need to show our brothers and sisters the hope. Walk with me in verse number 42. We are still in chapter number 41, verse number 42. Then Pharaoh took his signed ring off his hand and put it on in Joseph's hand. And he clothed him with garments of fine linen, and he put a gold chain around his neck. Verse number 43. And it had him ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried out before him, bow the knee. So he set him power all over all the land in Egypt. What was the interpretation, if you remember in verse number 37, that there are people or you are going to bow before me. Now, at that 10 minutes interpretation, Pharaoh removed his ring, a gold chain, a silver chain, hung it in his neck, gave him a chariot, and he's a second in command in Pharaoh, above over all the land in Egypt. How is that possible? My brother and sister, the light that was in Joseph is the same light that we and you have it. And sometimes we tend to put that light confined in one corner and we don't want to walk out of that light because people need to see this light. If Joseph made a decision not to speak to these two who is the baker and the, and the chief butler, he could not have this revelation. If sometimes we tend to hide this light, we don't want to the light to come out, the light will be taken from us. But Joseph knew and understand this light has to go out and he kept on pushing the light to go out. Pick with me to verse number 42. Now Joseph, when we're in, we're in chapter number, verse number 42, still in Genesis, when Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his sons, why do we look at one another? Now, the famine has strike. If you go through the story, the famine has strike uh, and the people have no food. And the only place that is as food is in Egypt. Of course, Jacob summoned his sons and told him, move your way to Egypt where there is food because you're going to die of hunger. Pick with me to verse number six. 
where in uh, chapter, uh, uh, Genesis chapter 42, verse number six, saying, now Joseph was governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brother came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. The interpretation or the revelation came to pass in verse number six of chapter number 42 in Genesis, where they came to bow before him. But before they bow down before him, if you go through the, 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 the verse, you'll understand that the interpretation was so critical or Joseph's interpretation and, and, and Pharaoh allowing Joseph to proceed with interpretation was so vital because through Joseph's interpretation, a lot of families were saved from the famine. It was so severe that everybody lost everything. There was no food at all apart from the stored grains through the interpretation of Joseph was head. So Joseph had a very, very, very important role that he played. Imagine from if Joseph was to speak as he was now at 30 years old or plus being the governor of Egypt, if he was to bring his 17 year old self who was tied in as a slave, walking to Egypt, not knowing the future, blinded by what was happening in the future. If he was to pull that 17 year old and pull him at 30 year old being the governor of Egypt, what do you think the 30 year old Joseph will be speaking to a 17 year old Joseph? What will you think he'll be telling him? He'll tell him, don't worry you are going to be great. Give yourself time, my 17 year old self. Give yourself time. And that is the same information that I'm speaking to you right now. It could be tough now, no doubt about it. It could be very tough where you are now. The position that you are in, I'm not sure how tough it is. But if you give it time, if you just give it time, just as Joseph gave it time, from the 17 year old, just as I gave myself time at a 20 year old walking to that big, huge gate. My brothers and sisters, it gets better. It gets better because God has a plan. God has, a, 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 he, he, he has put an age of our lives, just the same age he kept in, 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 in job. There's a lie that we have that we need to walk through. How could Joseph, a 30 year old, speak to a 17 year old Joseph that has lost everything, that is being moved from his comfort of his family, moved as a slave, blinded in darkness, moving to a land that he doesn't know. Joseph in prison, how could he speak a governor now if he was to bring in the 20 year, 25 year, 20 year old Joseph with a 30 year old Joseph as a governor? What do you think the older Joseph will tell the younger Joseph? He will tell him, just hold on. Don't give up. It's going to get better there. Tomorrow, there's light. Just give yourself time. It's not yet over. That's what Joseph is telling, the older Joseph is telling the younger Joseph. Just give it time. Just hold on. It could be rough. You could have lost everything now. It could be as rough as it is now as we speak. You've lost, you, 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 you've lost everything, your dignity your money, your investments, your, 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 your loyalty, you've lost it all. But the 30 year old Joseph is telling the younger Joseph, give it time, don't rush, just give it time. I'm telling you, the older Joseph, there is good thing happening in front. The younger Joseph is worried, he's blinded and he's scared and he doesn't know what to do. And the 30 year old Joseph telling me, I'm the governor. Take it easy, my younger Joseph, just walk with the process of the Lord. Just give it time. I'm assuring you, my, my younger Joseph, it's going to get better. The older Joseph is speaking to you now. The older Joseph is speaking to you, younger Joseph, that don't worry. You might be in prison, could not be physical prison of past prison, but could be a prison of addiction that everybody else has put you down. That the last person that you have is yourself. Speak to God, speak to God. He will give you direction. Look at the Joseph of 30 years old. He's telling you, give me time. Don't give up yet. You have miscarriage more than once, twice, thrice. There is no way you're going to get a baby, as people say. But the older Joseph is telling you, hold on, it's coming. Just give it time. Don't give up. 
Let me pick you up on verse number 43. Verse 43 of Genesis as we as we wind up. Verse number 43. Let's speak to 23. So chapter 43, verse number 23 says, But he said, Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sack. I had your money. Then he brought Simon out of them. The key word saying, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. Now, Joseph did not revenge to his brothers. There is a bit of tangle that he went through with them, but he didn't revenge. He knew the bigger purpose of his going through the process. And now, even if the brothers did not sell him, Joseph still was going to end up in Egypt one way or the other. So sometimes God just put people, even though sometimes he could pull you out or sometimes you could lose that, but just know the losing has a divine purpose. And Joseph had to undergo those process for him to be the governor of Egypt. He had to be sold. He had to, be go, he had to go to prison ashamed. He has to stood up after prison for him to be the governor. He could not go straight from Canines being a governor. No way. Joseph had to undergo the process for him to be ready to handle that responsibility that was there as a governor. Pick it up with me again to verse number 50 as we wind up. Uh, verse 50, let's pick it up, chapter number 19. Genesis chapter 50, verse number 19 as we wind up. And he says, if you're there, Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for I am in a place of God. Number 20, but as you, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it all, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and the little ones and be comfort, com comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So G Joseph understood that you might meant evil, but God had good plans. And the reason sometimes we go through those stuff is because God allowed them to happen. We have to be prepared for the bigger plan. My brothers and sisters, if you understand the process that Joseph went through, it could have taken him 20 years, it could have taken him less, it could have even taken him one day, but he understood that there is a process that God has in place. However painful it is now, I'm not talking about tomorrow, I'm talking about now that you're going through. Just give it time. The older Joseph is speaking to the under Joseph and telling him, give it time. Don't give up yet. Just to, as I wind up, i like to first call an appeal to older men, a men above 27, men who are father figures. Our generation, we are losing our generation. Our older men, we need to step up. We need to speak to our younger men because our generation is going in a direction that is not good. If you automatically are a father figure, once you turn into a an age of 27 and above, by automatic, you are a father figure. We need to pick up our younger men. We need to work with them. The pharmaceutical are making money selling Viagra to younger generation. A 20 year old, a 30 year old is taking Viagra. A Viagra to boost his sexual, uh, sexual motivation or desires. That younger generation is being lost. Being lost in alcoholism where the families are being destroyed. Oh, our younger men, older men, let's pick it up. Let's pick up because our generation is getting lost. Our younger generation are in prison, serving longer sentences because nobody was there to direct them. Our younger men are not stepping in to the church. Our main ministry needs to be stepped up. Where are we, older men? Where are we? I'm speaking to you, older man. Look at our, our churches now. Our ladies are taking over the churches because the men are shy at the background. They don't want to step up. I'm speaking to you, older men. Let's pick up our younger men as a father figure and let's follow them direction. 
look at, uh, uh, the, at the music ministry, we need to pull up those particular areas. It doesn't matter which church we are in. We have an obligation to speak to. Now, let me speak to our older ladies. Same age, could be less, could be younger. Some people much mature much faster. Could be 29 and, and above. Could be 27, 25 and above. We need to step up our game. We need to be mother figures to these young children. Our rate of abortion is increasing day by day. We have approximately 501 million cases a year. Could be more because they're not recorded. Our younger ladies are getting into addiction, drugs, cocaine, whatever addiction they're in at a very early age. We are losing a generation. If you go to prison, our, 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 our younger ladies are in prison serving for murders because they could not understand this marriage or this relationship was not right for her. It was a toxic relationship that if you found an older lady who could speak to her as a mother figure, she could have been saved from that. Oh, our ladies, we need to step up. We need to be the mothers that assist this younger generation because where they're going to, they need you, you as a mother figure to step up and lead them. Our churches, now the men are taking over because the ladies are not there anymore. If you go to, 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 to the prisons, if you go to the mental hospital, the ladies are more than anybody else. If you go to HIV rooms, the ladies are more than men. The social media has taken platform in a way that the ladies need to understand that meeting a man now, you can easily as go into WhatsApp and you meet a man one day, you go to an area. Let's step up our game. And I pray that as we move forward, we move with God. And the light that we have, let's show the younger generation this light. I continue praying for the ministries across the world. Thank you for the platform that we have to spread the gospel. And as we continue, I just leave it with one word saying, don't give up. Don't give up yet. God has big purpose for you. Do not give up yet. It's not yet over. It's not yet over. The situation that you're in now is not yet over. It's going to get better. I promise you, it's going to get better. As you continue to close, let me close with a word of prayer. Father, I pray that this generation that we have, we being at an older age that we can support or be a role model to the younger generation. Father, I pray we listening, being at an older age that you can guide our young ones, be with us, oh Father. Even the young ones, I pray, oh Father, that you be able to spread your word through whichever platform that you've given them, oh Father. As we pray for your word, oh Father, I pray as Joseph, that you may give us the same light to shine upon our, our people, all your people, Father. I pray, O King Jesus, O Father, you may guide us, O Father. Those who are in a situation that they feel it's over, just as Joseph was in a situation at the age of 17, when he was being sent from a distance as a slave, he knew his life is over. Fast forward 12, 14, 15 years later, he was the governor of, the, of, of, of Egypt. He never knew, but he had God to work with him, O Father. May we pray for God to be with us as we walk along. Continue blessing this ministry, blessing each and every person that is listening now. In Jesus' name we pray.